Hey everyone, I'm Jenny. Today I'm going to talk BigQuery. I'm first going to give you a three minute overview that will tell you everything you need to know about BigQuery, or at least the basics. And then I'm gonna show you one way to work with it, which involves ingesting data real time into BigQuery using a free ETL tool, S3 Flow, building a data pipeline with it. I'm gonna show you how to ingest data into BigQuery from another data source. If you have any questions or have other topics you want me to cover in future videos, feel free to leave a comment. So let's get started. What is BigQuery? BigQuery is Google's fully managed serverless data warehouse that enables scalable analysis over petabytes of data. How much is petabytes exactly? One petabyte is the equivalent of 20 million tall filing cabinets or 500 billion pages of standard printed text. It's a lot of data. Also, BigQuery is a platform as a service that supports querying using dialects of SQL. It also has built-in machine learning capabilities, which everyone is going after these days. When did BigQuery come about? BigQuery was announced in May 2010 and made generally available in November 2011, so it's been around for over a decade. What are some benefits of using BigQuery? There are many, but here are just a few. With BigQuery, you no longer have to provision and forecast compute and storage resources beforehand. BigQuery allocates all the resources based on usage dynamically. Also, BigQuery provides super fast analytics on a petabyte scale through its unique capabilities and architecture, which we'll talk about. And since BigQuery uses a columnar data store, you can enjoy the highest data compression with minimized data scanning in the usual data warehouse deployments. What is the BigQuery architecture like? BigQuery's serverless architecture decouples storage and compute and allows them to scale independently on demand. This structure offers both flexibility and cost controls for users because they don't need to keep their expensive compute resources up and running all the time. This is very different from traditional node-based cloud data warehouse solutions or on-prem MPP systems. This approach also allows users of any size to bring their data into the data warehouse and start analyzing their data using standard SQL without worrying about database operations and system engineering. Under the hood, BigQuery employs a vast set of multi-tenant services driven by low-level Google infrastructure technologies like Dremel, Colossus, Jupyter, and Borg. Compute is Dremel, a large multi-tenant cluster that executes SQL queries. Storage is Colossus, Google's global storage system. Compute and storage talk to each other through the Petabit Jupyter network. BigQuery is orchestrated via Borg, Google's precursor to Kubernetes. Now, at some point, you'll probably need to ingest data into or from BigQuery because every organization today relies on multiple data sources, databases, data warehouses, so it's likely that BigQuery alone cannot contain all of your data needs and pipelines. The good news is BigQuery supports several ways to ingest data into its managed storage. The specific ingestion method depends on the origin of the data. If your data sources are in GCP, then some of them support direct exports to BigQuery. However, if your data sources are outside of GCP or you don't want to manually handle exports, there are several third-party ETL solutions in the market that can help you ingest data to and from BigQuery fairly easily. Let's have a quick break. Have you ever had a feeling that ads are reading your mind? It's because advertisers are constantly invading your cyberspace, looking through your internet history and getting hold of your most intimate data. Now you can get your privacy back with Surfshark VPN. It blocks invasive targeted ads and shields you from web trackers that gather your data. Additionally, it protects you from viruses, keeping you safe, and prevents your identity from getting stolen. But in my opinion, the best benefit is you can connect to other countries' networks to watch shows that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. You can also sign up for Netflix in a country with lower subscription fees, and that easily makes Surfshark pay for itself. 
for work, I actually had to use VPN once to overcome some restrictions in order to complete a work project. And regardless of how many devices you have, you just need one account to give all those devices access. And Surfshark is one of the cheapest out there. It's running a limited time promotion right now. If you use the link in the description box below, you'll receive an exclusive discount plus your first couple months free. And there's a money back guarantee if you're not happy for any reason. So give it a try and now let's get back to our learning. Now I'm going to show you how to ingest data real time into BigQuery using Estuary Flow. Now I assume you already have an instance of BigQuery and already have some data you want to move to it. But in case you don't already have an account, the easiest way to play around with BigQuery is to try BigQuery Sandbox, which gives you free access to 10 gigabytes of storage and 1 TB per month of query data analyzed. You can follow this article on how to get started with BigQuery Sandbox. I'll put the link in the description. Now let's walk through how to set up a materialization in S3 flow to ingest data into BigQuery. In case you're not familiar with the term materialization, a materialization is a task in flow that pushes data from one or more collections to an external destination, whether it be a data lake or a database. Documents continuously move from each flow collection to the destination. As new documents become available within bound collections, the materialization keeps the destination up to date within milliseconds, or as fast as that system allows. Materializations interface with destinations using pre-built connectors in Flow, which we'll be using one today. First, go to estuary.dev and log into Flow. Um, you can register for a free account if you don't already have one. To capture data from a source, you would create a capture. To ingest data into a destination, you would create a materialization. Since this is a materialization demo, I already have a capture created, and I'm going to focus on the materialization setup. But if you want to see how to set up captures, you can check out other videos in this channel. Here are some examples. Let's get back to the materialization. Now click on materializations on the left menu, hit new materialization, and select a BigQuery connector. From here, you would just select a prefix from the dropdown and give the materialization a name. Now let's set up the endpoint configurations. For project ID, you can get that from your GCP account at the top um, on the dropdown, Estuary Theater in this case. So we'll put that in. For the service account JSON, you can get it from GCP, search for service account, find the one you want from the list, and then click the three dots under actions for that account and select manage keys. Click add key, create new key, make sure JSON is selected for the key type, and then just click create. Now going back to flow, drag and drop that JSON file just generated. Hit submit. Now let's go back to the GCP and search for buckets. Find a bucket you're using for this. Here you can get the name and the location, which are what we need in flow. So in flow, the region is the location we just saw, US. The bucket name is Jenny Demo Bucket, as we just saw. Now let's get the data set name. For this example, I'm going to be ingesting data into the Notion Blocks data set shown here. So we'll put that in flow, and that's all the required fields for the endpoint configuration. Now, what data are we ingesting into BigQuery? This is where you select the source collections down here. So I'm going to ingest data from Notion. So I already had a Notion capture set up here, and these are the collections captured by my Notion source connector. There are four of them. I specifically want to ingest blocks to BigQuery, so, so I'll be selecting that. But note that you can ingest multiple collections at once if you want. So you would just add the collections to the available collections here. Now let's hit next. Give me a 
So we're all set to go. Let's hit save and publish. Success. Now, if I go to my materializations list, I can see that my BigQuery materialization is getting the documents. I can expand here to view details. And I can see the specs of the materialization and collection. Now, let's check on the BigQuery side, go to our data set blocks. As we can see, all the data has made it in here. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel for upcoming content on how to start or build a career in tech, how to automate using low code RPA, how to build real time low code data pipelines, and other tech content.